guys thank you for joining me for another video uh, today I'll be well trying to finish a tiger painting in gouache um, I don't actually film a lot of my work that's because I generally draw paint almost every day and most of my work takes longer than a single session to finish and I don't really have a proper setup for filming so I tend to avoid doing so after the sun goes down but every now and then I do film a piece and it really uh, sort of turns out to be a bit of a gem and this was a perfect example because I've always wanted to explain to a potential aspiring artists uh, the need to continue a piece despite that potentially persisting ugly phase and this painting is perfect for that because for a big chunk of it I actually wanted to scrap it uh, it's been sped up quite a lot so it's hard to to tell potentially but I did really struggle with this piece So I guess everyone who's interested in art or craft or you know doing something creative is familiar with the ugly stages of a project. Now the more experience one has the more likely they're able to just move past it either because they know more techniques that they can use to get past it or they just have more patience. Um, but in my case it is rare that I ever create something without the ugly stage um, so I almost always have this period of time where I have to move beyond just wanting to scrap a painting um, so you could see me sort of struggling to Put in paint now just to try and get the contours of the tiger's head and there's a lot of back and forth back to the mixing plate adding more color subtracting color uh, it, I think yeah I don't know maybe it's because the video has been sped up it looks a bit like I know exactly what I'm doing but I really don't and right now it's because I am so Annoyed at the rest of the face that I've just moved on to the eyes because I'm like I could do the eyes and then there'd be something there and then maybe that would <laughs> force me to continue Now there were a few things going for me that I've I thought about and that stopped me from reaching like apoplectic levels of frustration. So the first being um, is the sketchbook. I am using a moleskin sketchbook here, so it's not the watercolor one, it's just the drawing one. And while it's not great for very wet media, um, it's pretty smooth. Now in my own experience, if the paper's too rough, uh, gouache paint can get clogged and lumpy, like pretty, pretty quickly. Uh, smooth paper at least in my case tends to give me some extra layers that I can add so the paper worked well and so did the paint um, in this painting I'm using a mixture of Windsor & Newton uh, the um, designer gouache which is their professional gouache uh, the, uh, I think it was the Dallarowney artist gouache and also Art Spectrum which is an Australian brand now I did not use the Sennelier gouache, which I filmed a review for previously, and we will link you to that. Um, and yeah, I think because I do know these paints better than, say, the Sennelier paints, I knew just how much I could add before I turned the whole thing into a big muddy mess. Now, that sort of ties in with my problem with gouache, which is that I generally overwork it. Now, I'm more experienced with water paint and oils, and for, with those mediums, I could just add until the cows come home for the most part. But 
with gouache, unless each layer is given sufficient time to dry, it sort of just gets clogged up. So it is a medium that requires some forethought, but from this painting, you may be able to tell that I'm sort of jumping all over the place. That's because I'm, I don't have forethought. I'm actually just getting really frustrated. I'm just adding a bit here and a bit there and, and hoping it works out. When you're in the middle of a, the ugly phase of a painting, you may not know whether it's going to turn out right or not, so you sort of have to take on faith to a certain extent. The absolutely best thing you can do at this stage is get up. And I actually did that just before this transition. Just get up, walk around, make yourself a cup of tea, come back, by then the layers would have dried and you don't have a false sense of the value of your paint because it does dry either lighter or darker depending on the paint. Um, but like don't give away, uh, sorry, like don't just leave it and then ignore it. Just come back and get back to it. Don't just write it off at this stage. Something else you can do is potentially introduce some mixed media. Uh, I'm a purist personally, so I tend to just stick with the one medium. But in some instances, I've saved a lot of paintings by either using gouache or using color pencils or using ink. And I think finally, if you go in with a mindset that no matter what you're doing, you're practicing and practice is never a useless endeavor, then you may not look at a piece and just think that it was a big waste of your time. So if you go into it that way, perhaps that could help. Um, actually, there is one other thing you can do, which is what I did in this piece that made me sort of stick to it. And that was ignore the face that was giving me such trouble and move to the eyes, which were a bit simpler. And by completing at least a section of the painting and having it work out, that motivates me to not give up on the piece. So maybe think about that as well. So yeah, it's probably a bit difficult to tell from a speed painting, you know, what the artist is thinking, but I could tell you now, there were many instances where I was just thinking, ah, I'll just prime this and paint over it with oils or something to that effect. And I can't speak for any other artist, but for me personally, this is a bit of a frequent battle. And it's just with experience and the reminder that I've gotten past these ugly stages and other paintings that allows me to continue. So I hope you enjoy the video, I'll leave you uh, to it to just finish it off um, and if you do have any questions just do let me know. I am going to be doing a review of the Windsor & Newton gouache because they are I think the brand that's probably most easily found in various countries so a lot of aspiring artists if they do want to pick up gouache then Windsor & Newton is likely to be a potential um, brand for them. Uh, and that would be, you know, a bit of a contrast to the Sennelier gouache review that I did previously. I actually haven't used the Sennelier gouache since that review, so I should probably get back to them. Uh, just give them another go. Uh, but uh, yeah, if you do have any questions, just leave me some, uh, leave me a comment below. And I am linking our other social media platforms. Uh, there are a lot more work in progress photos that you can find on our Instagram page. So feel free to go there and check those um, photos out. And again, if you have any questions about anything, let me know. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video. Please like and subscribe because it really does help us know what it is that you want to see. 
and、um, enjoy the tape peel at the end. Thanks, guys. See you later.